This is how I scored in the 96th percentile on the MCAT and I'm gonna go through a schedule, a hypothetical schedule that's honestly more efficient than what my schedule was when I was studying. So first you're gonna to wanna to familiarize yourself with what the MCAT is, what's on the MCAT and what the sections are and how much time you have for each section. Then you're gonna to wanna to work backwards from your test date. So whatever test date you picked, however many months you have out, make sure you block off the last month of testing for just AAMC content. And depending on how long you have to study, you're going to break up the beginning part of your study schedule between content review and practice questions and practice tests. So essentially content and practice. And for how to break up content versus practice, this is kind of how I like to visualize it. Usually you start off pretty content heavy, just learning everything that you don't know already. And you gradually bring up the practice volume over time as the content goes down. My recommended way to cover content review is to use this website called studyschedule.org and it's essentially going to ask you a bunch of questions about how much time you have to study, how, how much time you want to study each day, and then it's going to generate a, a schedule based on the content resources that you're using. So for me, I was using the Kaplan books, so it would give me what chapters to study each day and I really liked it because it was nice to just have something tell me what to do each day. However, you don't want to just be reading these books. There's a whole strategy to actually learning the material instead of passively reading the textbooks. You want to actually use Anki or another flashcard app in order to solidify the information and learn it longer term. So I would recommend finding a pre-made Anki deck. So I think the Onking has one. And there's another one called Miles Down, I believe. There's a lot of different pre-made decks that are tagged very nicely. And you can get really familiar with the Anki interface by looking at Anking's resources. I'll link it in the description box below. And I personally actually made my own flashcards, but this is the part that I was talking about that I would consider being more this plan being more efficient because I do not think making your own cards is efficient. I think that using pre-made cards is perfectly fine and it'll save you a lot of time, especially if you're on a tight schedule. So check out the pre-made decks, learn how to suspend and unsuspend cards, and then read a chapter based on what studyschedule.org is telling you to do. Read those chapters that day and then review flashcards at night. That way you have um, full active learning and you're also reading the chapters. I also would recommend trying to get as many practice tests in as possible as you can afford as well as you have time for. So what I would do is I would block off one day, usually Saturday, for practice tests and then Sunday to review the practice test. I would recommend doing that either every week or every other week during your studying because if, if you can afford the practice test or if you can find enough free ones because that is what you're going to see the most improvement with. When you're reviewing your tests, you want to make sure you do it in a very in-depth way. I did it in a way that I like to call the stream of consciousness slash rabbit hole technique, which is very loose and essentially just means that if there was something I didn't know, then I would go on like this rabbit hole of Google searching and trying to figure out what it was and also just... If there was something new I didn't know after searching the initial thing, I would look up that thing as well and just kind of keep going and going. And then the stream of consciousness part is where I would write out exactly what I was thinking when I answered the question and exactly why I answered it wrong or why I answered it right in an Excel spreadsheet, just like word vomiting into the page. And it really helped me understand my um, problem solving methods when I was taking this test. Here are some examples of things I actually wrote while I was reviewing my test in my little stream of consciousness Excel spreadsheet, so buckle up. So as you can see on the left column, I have the general idea of what the topic is, and in the right, it's just really me just ranting to myself about why I got it wrong and what the topic is and me Google searching it and writing a bunch of stuff about it. Okay, I just wanted to show some examples, but that's it for this. So once you feel pretty confident with your content, you're gonna to wanna to move into a practice, almost exclusively practice phase of your studying, which I would recommend using UWorld for. It's a online question bank of a lot of MCAT questions. 
So this is before you start AAMC content, but after you finish your content review, or you can even start this during your content review if you don't have a lot of time. That's totally fine if you have time for it. So basically what you want to do is you can use UWorld or online questions or just questions in general in any way you would like. But how I did it was I would actually, I started off UWorld by just doing one question and then looking at the answer and then writing down on my iPad or piece of paper, like any of the relevant diagrams or explanations that I didn't know that UWorld gave me. So UWorld is pretty unique because it's not just practice questions, but it'll give you a question. And then once you ask to show the answer, it'll also show you like a corresponding like textbook paragraph that actually explains the topic that this question is testing on. So it's kind of combining practice and content review into one, which is why I really like it. I would use that to my advantage by at the beginning, just doing a practice question and checking the answer and like kind of writing over and over again the diagrams out because once you start doing UWorld you start to realize that you don't know anything <laughs> it's really humbling because you'll get like 50% correct or even less than that and it's okay because it's only for practice purposes do not worry about the accuracy until maybe the end so what you're going to want to do is use it as a practice resource and essentially when you're doing UWorld make sure that you're not getting too in your head about it is what i'm trying to say <laughs> also that was just the beginning part of uworld so you just want to do a question at, at a time or this is my method a question at a time and the answer check it after each time and then once you start to see the same themes kind of popping up over and over again and you start to recognize the topics and you're starting to do a little bit better in you world you can start doing the questions in chunks so that was when i would try to do it kind of timed i would do 10 questions at a time and then i'd bump it up to 20 questions at a time and sometimes i would do it by topic and sometimes i would do it by a bunch of different topics to kind of simulate the mcat it really depends on what your personal preference is but i would set about I don't know how much time, but set a lot of time for UWorld because it's where I saw the most improvement and I think it's where a lot of my friends did as well when they were studying. Also a final important note about UWorld, I would highly recommend making flashcards while you're doing your UWorld questions. So that means copy pasting some of the diagrams that were helpful for you and making sure that you're able to review those UWorld flashcards that you missed, especially the questions that you missed later on. Moving on to the last stage of my MCAT studying and MCAT schedule, the AAMC content. So this was kind of where I wasn't super sure how to approach it, but I essentially tried to get all of this. You want to do all of the AAMC content, do everything that they give you because the, the, they are the people that wrote the exam. So it's going to be the most accurate and you're going to want to treat the full length exams kind of like those practice tests that you were doing on the weekends or once a week beforehand. So you're going to want to do those once a week generally, or if you're on a more extreme timeline, maybe twice a week. Um, and then what I did was I used um, the Med Bros YouTube video covers this. So I'll link it in the description, but instead of doing all of the, I think it was question banks, um, just by themselves, I made them into mini practice tests. So I would do these, I would put all these questions together and um, take it almost as if it was an MCAT. So that was really helpful for me because at that point I was just trying to get down timing. And then I also think in your last month, you should be doing things that are more based on your own specific weaknesses. So if you think that you are lacking in a certain section, you're gonna to wanna to rep that section really hard with your practice questions and your content review. So just filling in the gaps where you see fit. One final thing, you definitely wanna trust your full length scores. So the AAMC full lengths are gonna be the most accurate to what you are gonna get on the actual test day. So if you're feeling really anxious about this test, just try your best to study to the point where you're sco scoring within your goal range on the AAMC full lengths and just have the confidence in yourself to know that since you've done it on the AAMC tests that you can do it on the actual test as well because you can. My my test was I think an average of all of my AAMC full length tests.
Okay, I hope that helps. That was kind of the overview of how to make an MCAT schedule. I am happy to answer any questions you have for me and I'm hoping to post more videos soon. So feel free to subscribe if you wanna see more medical content because I'm starting medical school in the fall and it's gonna be a wild ride. So buckle up. <laughs>